Welcome to another Business Spotlight. Uh, my name is Kerry James. I'm a business coach. I'm a facilitator. And on Business Spotlights, we share reflections and insights and pearls of wisdom from local business owners. And this morning, I'm delighted to welcome uh, Mr. Chris Ball, uh, founder of Frequently AI. Good morning to you and great to have you on, Chris. Good morning. Thank you for having me. You're, you're very welcome. Wet Manchester morning. Indeed. <laughs> indeed. So let's try and brighten things up a little bit with some insights about your story uh chris so frequently AI, I, please tell us how long have you been in business and what area do you specialize in please yeah so i mean relatively speaking we're, we're a startup so we've started in july 2022 uh and what we do is we help predominantly amazon sellers either launch grow or scale on amazon and we do that through a combination of strategy pay-per-click copy and creative and that's kind of what my background is really so i've worked in marketplaces for a little over 13 years now. So we started on eBay and then Amazon become a lot bigger and kind of focus more on Amazon. So I think 10 years of those 13 have been client side as well. So I've worked in the actual brands themselves and then I moved over to like the agency side to, to more of a service-based business. So when did you start up then, uh, Chris? And uh, have you got a team in place now? Yeah, so we started... Uh, mid last year and yet yeah, we've, we've got a small team in place servicing clients uh so there's three full-time people uh and then we have like a bank of freelancers but we also as the name might suggested we, we leverage ai quite a bit as well well certainly interested in hearing more about that but let's um let's get a bit of a sense of what might be a typical client for you in terms of um you know what they do what sectors they operate in the size and shape what, what might be an ideal client for you yeah, so predominantly our, our ideal clients tend to be uh, brands who have tend to like, sell stuff via e-commerce, so household products, uh, probably already selling on Amazon and doing okay, but they kind of maybe they've not updated in a while or maybe they're outpaced by the competitors yet and we just kind of come in and kind of take over that process, everything from like copy to creative to day-to-day -day management, et cetera. So, so yeah, usually couple of million pound turnover uh, on Amazon is, is kind of the sweet spot. But we have helped massive companies who had no Amazon presence at all launch on Amazon. And then we've also got a lot of experience with multi-million pound uh, Amazon vendor accounts, et cetera. So, so yeah, it does vary quite a bit, but use the, the sweet spot, the most of our clients kind of see in that. Okay. And so, so tell spot. us more about how AI specifically contributes, which which areas does, that, does AI help you with in that situation, Chris? Yeah, so, I mean, some of the most prevalent ones really is when it comes to copy. So we'll use um, AI to help us build out copy, uh, do keyword research. Also, we use it to help us come up with concept or creative. So, for example, so we might have a piece of content around, like, uh, I don't know, a dog lead or a garlic press, and it's kind of what that process would look like on the page. So as people are following the page down, so we use AI to them. We use AI for images as well. So we've already got a basic set of images from the client. We can use generative AI to actually build out different concepts and put them in different backgrounds and kind of make them look a lot better. So yeah, there's not just one kind of aspect to it or one tool that we use because we, we probably have about, not including our own tool, we probably use about 10 or 12 different tools to kind of do all these different things. Uh, but yeah, they're kind of like the main aspects. And then we also... We run advertising for clients as well, and we'll use machine learning, which is just essentially AI anyway. So, yeah, so there's a lot of AI that goes into it, which helps us become more efficient. So there's always a human aspect, and then there's an AI aspect, and then there's a human aspect at the end as well. So when you're searching within Amazon, is there like an SEO in in that sort of context? And is that something that AI is, is useful on applying to as well? Yeah, so there is there's SEO uh, for Amazon. And there are specific tools, uh, not ones that we own, but there's a lot of tools within our industry that people use, such as like Helium 10 and Jungle Scout and some tools on Google, like loads of different tools. Uh, and what they do is they actually go onto the pages and kind of pull all the keywords for you. So it enables you to use a combination of that and the tools of AI to actually start building out these listings. And then we'll use copywriters just to check through everything, make sure everything's actually written, not just for the computers, but also for humans. Okay. Okay. So just broadening things out a little bit then, Chris, it's been interesting times over the last uh, few years as you know, since you've, you've started your business, whether it's the digital revolution or hybrid working, 
or inflation rates, interest rates, etc. How have all those trends impacted in, on your industry and your business? Would you say? Yeah, so I think definitely with with especially on Amazon anyway, like the COVID thing was was a massive impact because everyone just moved to online selling, which was really big in our industry, which then created a lot of other companies like classes aggregators who went up and started buying a load of smaller companies to make them into to one larger companies, which in turn pushed the wages up of people because there's not enough people in the industry to, to do the jobs. So that was good when you run the client side because my wages went up considerably. Uh, so that was that was always nice. But uh, a lot of people moved from kind of office-based working as well to, to home-based working, which in my previous agencies I used to work for, they kind of always did that anyway, so it was never an issue. Uh, but yeah, a lot of companies, so you can kind of hire talent. So like one of our workers is based in the Philippines uh, because we're a fully remote company. So it just makes it makes sense. You, you kind of talent pool is massive now compared to what it used to be. Okay. Okay. So uh, uh, very positive impact overall. And, and given where you are now and where you are aiming to get to then, Chris, what would you say are the main challenges for the business today? Uh, I think... Really, it's kind of a, a chicken and egg for us at the moment because, again, because we're a relatively new company, is that one, we need to get new clients. And then once we get those new clients, we have to service those clients. So we're kind of constantly like bringing in people, bringing in clients, bringing in people, bringing in clients. So, yeah, so it, it can kind of hinder the growth a little bit. Uh, so I'd probably say like the two, that's probably the biggest thing is one, getting more clients and two, getting more revenue, essentially, so we can bring people in to service those clients. How many months or what, what might be the typical duration that you operate with a client? Is it is it a, a case of, you know, kind of giving them a service to get them up and running and then they can take over themselves without your support? Or what, what what's the typical um, arrangement, yeah, it's, project duration? So, yeah, so it's most of the time it's not actually done on a project. It's, it's like an ongoing thing. And the reason being is like the advertising itself and the content refreshes and doing split testing and Amazon's forever changing. Is like there's a constant array of new things coming out, all things that need to be sorted. Uh, but we, we've done project work. And yeah, with project work, it is aimed to kind of give them enough training to be able to get them through it or for them to bring someone in and then for that, them, that person to come in and kind of overtake that process. I think, like, as an outsider, I didn't know Amazon the way I do. I mean, I worked at a previous agency as well. It was a non-Amazon agency. Like, it's people are always surprised how many different part, like, moving parts there are. So there's essentially the pay-per-click department, the creative department, the copywriting department. And it's, you need to know the strategy behind it. And then Amazon should forever change as well. So there's multiple kind of people, or you need to be multiple kind of people, really. Hmm. And how how competitive is that that whole scenario, Chris? And a how competitive is it? And how do you differentiate yourselves from from that competition? Yeah. So I mean, it never used to be because it's a relatively new kind of service. To be perfectly honest, there have been some big companies and there've been some big buyouts of of late. Uh, and yeah, it's it's a hard one because you're always playing an Amazon sandbox. So we are quite limited to what we can do. We always have to follow this like kind of set rules. I mean, what kind of stands us apart really is one, we have this, we, we leverage AI and we're, we're really honest about it. So there's there's plenty of other potential companies that may be using AI and they just don't let the clients know because the clients maybe will actually be using AI while we're paying you. Uh, so that's always a big thing. So we're always kind of big on that and working client side for 10 years as well. We're always big on communication as well. So we have like Slack, we have telephone numbers, we have emails, uh, and we have like a ticketing system, so you can kind of, there's a constant line of communication and weekly meetings. And to set us apart, it's pretty much anyone could do those really, if they did it well enough, uh, is that we have like these three main services. We kind of have a do-it-yourself service, done-with-you service, or a done-for-you service. So the do-it-yourself service is the world's first AI Amazon seller assistant chatbot, which is just live on the website and it's free for anyone to use. So basically you just go on if you get stuck on a question, ask any question about someone on Amazon, and the vast majority of the time it'll be able to give you an answer. And what we've done with that as well is each time someone asks a question, uh, we actually can see what they've typed in and we'll actually go back through. And if it's a question the AI can't answer, we'll make a document with the correct answer and then we'll add it 
pick into the AI. So next time someone asks that exact same question or a similar question of that ilk, the AI will be able to answer it next time. So it's forever getting better. So the more people that use it, the better it actually gets. Uh, and then we have the uh, done with you option. So you kind of tell us what you need doing. You might have a set of images that need doing or a set of listings that need creating or you might just need like a one-off strategy building or just your ads. Um, you tell us what you need, we do it for you and then send it back to you. And then finally, there's the last option, which is the full service essentially. So basically we just, you give us the keys and we just go in and, and basically uh, make all the changes necessary to kind of, whatever your goal is. So is it profitability? Is it growth? Whatever it may be. So yeah, uh, I think we are the only agency that does that within the space. We've got three essential offerings. I'm, I'm guessing, uh, Chris, that it's relatively straightforward to put in some metrics to measure the impact of your work. Is that is that fair? And, and if yeah. so, how, how does that work? Yeah, so it, it's definitely fair, yeah. So uh, whenever we set up with a client, we always set goals. And that goal, as I mentioned just then, maybe uh, profitability, it might be growth, whatever it may be. But yeah, we can actually go through and see... For example, if we make a change on a listing, we can say, well, actually, we changed this listing at this point and conversion rate went up 3% or conversion rate went down 1%. Or if we're running advertising, we can see that the ROAS on this particular advertising set did really well. What was the reason behind that? So, yeah, that's the good thing. Although we're in Amazon Sandbox a lot of the time, it's really good because pretty much everything is measurable to some degree. Very good. Very good. Now, what about uh, aspirations for the future then, Chris? Where do you um, where do you expect or hope the business to be in you know, three to five years type of time frame? Yeah, so we definitely want to grow. Uh, we've uh, in the process we've got to raise funds just to kind of get out of that. We bring a client on that we need to bring a person on kind of thing. We want to kind of get in front of it so we can kind of do a lot more marketing. Uh, so yeah, I'd love to grow it and continue to grow it. Uh, number of people, number of clients, and also expand into new markets into new channels as well so at the moment we're quite heavily focused on amazon because the vast majority of our clients always come to work with amazon stuff but yeah we'd love to add more uh, marketplaces on so for example like ebay and uh, walmart and all these other places and then actually moved out into international as well so germany market is big us as well so we do have a few clients that do on the uh, sell on these particular markets but We'd love to like have people in house where we could just do the the German listings ourselves, for example. So okay. essentially, just native speakers. And what would you say are the main lessons that you've learned since you've since you've set up this business? If you yeah, give yourself I mean, some advice on day one, now now that you know what you know now, Chris, what what might that be? Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, I wish I wish you would have done it earlier because it was definitely the right decision. Uh, but yeah, th there's definitely some some hard days. I'm a solo founder as well, so it, I always feel like it's quite hard to bounce anything off people, et cetera. So, uh, so yeah, that's probably one of the hardest things, really, is just like, yeah, being being on your own. And also, I think the second hardest thing is is people, um, what I mean by that is now that you have people working for the company is making sure that everyone's getting paid and chasing money up. So whereas when I was working for a company, I probably did like 100% work on like Amazon and people. Now it's, it's, it's dived down quite a bit because there's so much more administration that goes into running a business than I ever expected. And what what are there? What about um, finding the right people, getting the right people, training the right people? How, how what what are the kind of lessons in that area? Would you say, Chris? Yeah, so I mean, I've always been quite lucky with it, to be perfectly honest. Uh, and a lot, I shouldn't really say this because people start messaging me, but like everyone that works for the company has always messaged me first to say, and like took the initiative to come forward and say, look, either I'm looking for a job or I'm at this job and it's not really working out, so. Uh, yeah, they're the kind of people that I like that have already like outreached and and done made an effort essentially, not just kind of spraying and spraying um, with the CV. So yeah, that's worked really well. Uh, yeah, it's 
I mean, everyone likes to think they're a good judge of character, don't they? But yeah, I've been quite lucky so far. And I mean, we're only a relatively small team as well, so we've not had any bad eggs so far. Do, do you have a list of uh, specific values that you use for your recruitment, for example, Chris? Do you know what? I've not actually got that far with it, to be perfectly honest. Uh, I just like everyone that works at the company, we just kind of had like a really informal chat first and then probably a bit more of a serious meeting after that. Mm. Just to kind of gauge what they like and kind of get a bit of demeanor about them, really, and just kind of what what drives them and what they want to do and mm. what why they decided to outreach. So yeah, we've not got any values yet. We probably should have some, but uh, I didn't want to just put something up. Like we do have kind of company values, but not so much when it comes to, to recruitments. Okay. Very good. Well, um, I guess, you know, I do a fair bit of work with, with some of my clients in that area, and we like to um, encourage business owners to think about, you know, what, what what's important to them as business owners, what's important to the team. But then the other one that maybe is not so obvious is what's important to the customer to make sure they come back and buy from you again. <laughs> so those yeah. are the starting points we uh, we work with clients on in relation to values. Very good. So, um, well, it's been great. Thank you very much for sharing your story, Chris. One, one final question, if I may. If, if we've got a uh, a business owner or a, a viewer of business spotlight that's interested in uh, a follow-up conversation what what might be a sensible first step would you say chris yeah so there's a contact form on the on the website you can reach out via chris at frequently.ai uh, or you can find me on linkedin as well so it's christopher ball uh, yeah and just reach out any kind of uh, specifically amazon questions or marketplace questions uh, yeah, and just put some time in and we can have a, have a chat and see if there's a way we can help you and if we can help you, we'll move forward. And the vast majority of the time, if it's not something we can help with because we've been in the industry a long time, like maybe not as a company, but as people, then we'll know someone who'll be able to help you. Very good. Okay, well, we'll put those URLs linked to the videos. Uh, and uh, once again, Chris, thanks for sharing your story. Thanks for your time and all the very best with Frequently AI. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you. Okay, all the best. Bye for now.